Right, ready? I hope you're ready for this next project. Welcome to another instalment of us renovating the property we bought at auction. Now, last week, first of all, we installed the plasterboard to replace the wreck stuff because this property had a flood last winter because the pipes froze, flooded the property. But before I tape all of this stuff, I want to do a good session of it all at the same time. And the reason for that, I'll, I'll show you around here. We've actually got this to deal with as well. So there's still nails hanging out. We've still got to trim this. But the reason I haven't done this yet is because I'm probably going to make more damage or could do because we now need to install a loft ladder up here and then we can replace the rest. So this is the existing one, which is the width of the existing joist. It's been worked around and we want to make it bigger. So I've actually bought a loft ladder kit with a frame, an insulated frame, and I've got a plan to show you. So I'll take this through to the loft ladder that we've bought and I'll go into full detail about what we plan to do. So this is the one that we've bought. In fact, we've had loads of deliveries in the last uh, week because I've been waiting for Black Friday with big discounts. So this one needs an opening of 0.55 meters, which is just there. And the length is 1.13 meters. So we've gone on SketchUp. My husband's done the whole plan of this, of the house. It's just so we can get the cuts on computer first make mistakes there so we don't have any major disasters in the house. My plan is, I've actually also bought some timber for it. Now, this is 95 by 45 millimetres. It's the closest I could get to the existing joists, which is 95 by 35 millimetres. The height is fine, it's just that little bit thicker. And the opening for the existing loft ladder is actually slightly bigger than 55. So that actually might work in our favour, this being thicker. Now, having a plan in front of us tells us what cuts we need to make. So I told my dad just to uh, check with him, is there anything you can see that's structurally not right with it? Because I'm not a structural engineer. That's the first thing a lot of people would advise you to do anyway, which way your joists go. And he said, no, 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 no. What if your joists aren't square? So I've taken his advice. I'm going to build the frame around the loft ladder first, but I'm going to make sure that the lengths are longer and then take the frame away and put them on top of the joist without the loft ladder installed at this point because it's going to be too heavy. And when I put it on top, make sure it's central in the hall, I can mark exactly where I need to cut all of my joists. And I can cut down the longer lengths of timber. And then I know it's going to be bespoke to how those joists are. So if it's slightly out of square, it doesn't matter. We can work our way around it. First, let's get these out of the way. So let's strip this open. We can have a look at any of the instructions. Oh, and the reason why we want to install this now is because then we can get better access to install all of the insulation that we put up there last week. And even though it started to get warmer when we installed the plasterboard, we're not really feeling the benefit anymore because it's freezing this week and it wasn't then. I think with discounts, this ended up being about 130 quid, but we've gone for a wooden one as well. If you do want to go for this type, I'll leave a link to everything that we use in the description. And don't move your arms about because I nearly stabbed myself then. Yeah. We need to attach this while it's in situ. You've got your pulley stick. Oh yeah, the feet for the bottom of the ladders. Let's stick that there. And instructions. That stays there. So this is the good side and I don't want to scratch it while I'm working on it because I've got no carpet. So I'm going to put it back on the... Um, the MDF protector piece. And I've taken all the bits of packaging off as well, all the, um, the staples and stuff. So the first thing I wanna do is, because I want the longest pieces to rest, overhang on the joists, I'm gonna cut the two short ends first. That's what I'm gonna mark now. I've butted one against the short edge, but I'm gonna put this down anyway, just as a stopper so I don't get anything wrong. That meets there, and now I can draw on this side of where I need to cut. I'll do one cut first, double check it, and make another cut so I don't accidentally do two wrong cuts. Let's take that to the mitre saw. Just want to sip a tea. 
All right, best be quick because these are going to steam up. It's cold in here. Can you see? So this is the cut that I want. My pencil line is there, but my blade is going to be on this side, just on this side, because I don't want to lose um, even a mill to the blade. And so that's why I've put it on this side. If I go on the other side, it's going to be that little bit too short. It's probably going to be then hard to even put the box back in the frame. So let's get cutting. So that fits perfectly and now need to do the same on the other side but instead of cutting timber off this one because I need the long length to overhead on the joists I'm going to do it on this one. Let's get that lined up in that corner. That's my new cut. Now I've got my framework temporarily surrounding my loft ladder. I've got an overhang of three inch on either side on this hinge side. And remember the reason for that is because when I screw this in and put it up there, the overhang will rest on top of the joist. It won't just fall through. And while it's up there, this framework, which is the white framework on our SketchUp diagram, you can see this is where we'll know where to cut on top of the joists. And then later we'll also need to cut this longer piece because right now our frame is longer than this and it'll tell us where to cut the ends of it. Now because it's going to take some serious weight I want to use very sturdy strong screws. Now normally because the wood is overhung here I can usually get away with just using an impact driver and using thin screws uh, like these but instead I'm going to use these ones and they're quite thick so I'm definitely definitely going to pre-drill first and then use the impact driver. Oh, and I'm just holding this up. I just, I thought I'd just show you, most of the screw will be going into the wood there. So I'm going to put one screw there and one screw there and do that for all four. So now I've screwed the frame together. I'm going to remove it from the loft ladder. Oh. Might need two people to push that up, especially after last week's plasterboard performance. So now we've got the exact template of our loft ladder. We're going to take this up, rest it on top of the joist, get it central in the hall so we know exactly where to mark around it and cut the joist itself. Right, the frame is up there, but we now need to get better access. So I need to rip off the old architrave just so I can get it exposed. This trim needs to go as well. Then we can start getting the frame central and start cutting the joists. Oh. They don't show you this bit on video, do they? trying to be as careful as I can because I don't want to damage more plasterboard. It's got a little nail at the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's have a hammer saw. Why struggle? I struggle with a hammer, so I resort to a saw because the might of trims were so well wedged in the corner. And I did this very carefully because I didn't want to cut any joists yet. Let's nail from this side. So I now I've got two cross supports between the joists and I need them to go. They're in the way. So before I hand saw them, I need to just double check up there whether there was any cables, because obviously I don't want a disaster. So let's have a look. Right, there's none on that side. Oh. It's all right, pal. Right, there's no cables at all. Okay, so I think my multi-tool attachments are blunt. So I've had to finish off the uh, cutting the nails. 
with a large hacksaw. So I'm just going to finish this last one here. Come on, you Ah, yes. Right. And this is where I realised I had to strip more plasterboard than I wanted to. It turned out the plasterboard was nailed to the hatch itself, not screws, and hacksawed some final hidden nails that I missed to get the wood out. with the mineral damage that well couldn't have done it any other way now i've removed all of that i still want a better visual so i can get my loft ladder absolute central to this room so what i'm going to do is hold up a straight edge which is a very long spirit level up to this coving and i'm going to draw a line along it up until the next joist then i'm going to cut it do exactly the same on the other side and remove this plasterboard Okay, now I need to find center in the hall, mark on the joists, then I can measure center of the frame. Anyway, we're getting central. 47.23, it, it's, it's roughly there. But oh my God, it's now really cold up here. So in a minute, I need to get the center of this. So let's use a speed square to um, draw it up there. So if you remember, this frame also has an overhang so it won't fall on me. So there, now I need to work out the center of that. 27.5, once I got my center point, I'm tapping my frame with a hammer to make sure my center marks line up with each other. That's on the new frame and the existing joist below. Now I've lined that end, I'm just gonna get this in line and try and line it up with a pencil line. Just another mill or two. 27 and a half. So now I know exactly well, I'll double check the other end first. Let's double check, measure twice, cut once. Yes, that's right. So now I know where to draw um, my lines to cut these joists on the outside, not the inside, but it's still central. That's where our marks are to line those up. Wow, it is cold. Because I want accuracy for my cuts, I'm not using a handsaw, I'm using my work compact saw. I've set up a guide for it, so I can then run along it and make a straight cut. I'm clamping my cut up, so when I cut this end, it's not just gonna drop down and then break a light or whatever. Right, ready? I'm lining the frame up now with my pencil lines. I've pushed this along over here, so this piece is in line with the joist. And now I need to just double check with my marks that I did earlier. And now I just want to pencil this. That's where I'm going to cut it now. Now it's all even. I think I've found its maximum and it is on the maximum. Finish off handsaw. Now we've trimmed down the frame, we've slotted it back around it. We're now ready to dismantle this, take it up there, but we need to prop it up on some wood so this frame bit, the outer bit, is in line with the existing joists. I'm just using any straight off cuts that I could find at hand. nip it up. I've got enough props there now so we now need to get the frame up. Screw it all into the joists. 27 and a half. 27 and a half. So right I need to um, start screwing. I'm going to do this end first because the OSB isn't the strongest for this. So we've screwed the hinge end behind you right now and then I'm going to work on this side and then do the joist ones. Okay, so I've now got to screw through the framework to each batten. I've got a few going that way into that joist and I've had to screw from the joist on over that side, you probably can't see it because there's a platform, to go straight into these two bits. 
So now, rather than putting too many, we need to really check to see if it fits. And once we've slotted the actual loft ladder kit in, we need to get that level, and then we can put the last few screws through that into the frame and into the joist. So right now, the loft ladder kit is wedged inside. But do you remember those slats that I had up there earlier that were in line with the joists? I then went and got some scraps of 12 and a half millimeter plasterboard from our last project. So the loft ladder kit is now resting on the offcuts of wood to the thickness of the plasterboard. Now I've gone for 12 and a half millimeter thick plasterboard scraps in here only because the rest of the hallway plasterboard is actually nine mil and we can tell because it's exposed, some of it's missing. And so that'll give me about three mil ish to add some skim on top of it later to blend in with the rest. Before I put any more screws in, I want to just double check this hatch is square still, otherwise we might have to put some packers in. So if it's not square, it won't close. Please close. Yeah, that works. Now I've got the challenging task of lifting the ladders up to there while I try and screw some bolts in to the four brackets. So uh, yeah, and this dog's gonna have to come out. Don't want you having an accident. Come on, hands. Come on, into the bedroom. Good boy. See you in a minute. I've got my bolt holes at the top of here, so I know this is the top. So I'm gonna have to try and open this out. That's a good sign. Oh, oh I had it. <laughs> Right, it says to only use a hand screwdriver for that. Let's get those in. I'm not tightening it up completely because I need to get those in in a second. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yes. I hate going in the attic if I don't need to. So I now need to mount these support brackets to the inside and there's already some holes there thank goodness because we couldn't find them initially and you've got four different holes and we've got to put it in the lowest one because ours is the shortest amount i'll leave the little diagram if you want but obviously your loft ladder may be different right, there you go i'll try and tighten it a bit more but okay step two see i don't really like these instructions but we've uh, deciphered them now and we've got to unscrew this one here, so then we can put the screw back, but it's gotta go through here. Hurrah. Whoa there, pickle. I'm getting the wrong screw. Just to let you know, it should be this one that goes in instead. Okay, so I'll over tighten. Now comes the realization that I have to go up in the attic to attach the springs while the loft hatch was closed. Let's have a look at the damage. Hello. Didn't want to come up here, but I've got to. So what I need to do is to get my spring attached to both sides. I'm going to ask my cameraman to close this hatch. So while I'm up here, I've got to hook the top end to there. The spring will be in the middle and then the bottom one goes to the bottom. Let's give it a go. So I'm going to get closed in. Bye. That's now propped up with some CLS structural timber. So we'll hook that there. And then that goes down there. I needed two hands, but what I had to do is just stretch this as much as I could up to this hook. I got there in the end. Now I've got to do it with the other one. I'll try and film it. Come on. Got it. Got to get it to stay there. My spring is going to be hooking onto that. This is where you need to do a lot of swearing. Right, now I've got to pull this. Oh God, I'm sliding all over the place. Right. Oh, oh, so close, so close. Come on. Yes. Oh, it's on now, thank goodness. So we've just pulled this down. There is now some resistance until you push it all the way open. And now I need to put the catch in. So I've got four screws. And by the way, it's got little like nubbing things there to slot in here to make it more foolproof for people like me. I'm gonna put those in. 
there. Now there's a catch to go on that side. So the next thing I've got to do is add this catch piece to the frame itself. I've got a little cover cap to tidy it up, which should slot into that hole. Then put that in. It's got to be a quicker way than this. So to make sure I can get this down every time, I need to put this hook cap thing on the pole provided. Right, shall we test it? Oh no. This catch isn't coming out. Oh, this controls how much it protrudes. I didn't know that. Okay, let's test that. Oh, panic over, I found that when we were closing the door, these uh, prongs on the latch, by the way, there's a bolt on here, which you use to pull with your pole. And when I pull it, this goes inwards, but it wasn't catching on the latch. So this latch was too far up. So I just want to show you, we've unscrewed it now, lowered it. But if I unscrew it and show you, it can go as far up as that. And we know in that position, it doesn't catch. So I'm going to bring it down. There. To work out where I need to cut the bottom of the ladder, because it's too long at the moment, it's folded back. We've just got it resting on a sawhorse. It could be resting on the floor. So what I've done as well is I've clamped a straight off cut to the back at the bottom of here. And that gives me a bit of a lip to then put another off cut just there flat against that also making sure it reaches the floor so that is in line with the ladder and I can mark underneath there where to cut it and then I'll transfer this measurement here to the back of this ladder now I'm just going to cut a 90 degree angle on there because I don't have to worry about an angle because this once these feet are placed on top these are actually angled to make up the difference that'll be the front that'll be the back 54 and a half, 54 and a half. So my line there is just going to kiss this step. I'm just drawing a 90 degree angle there. I'm popping the feet on. Hello. I'm all right with this. Now we just need to tidy it up. So I've just recycled a bit of the joist to double the strength of this one. So it prevents it from bowing. So what we're now having to do is cut here where the coving is, remove any of the excess overhang of the old plasterboard, just so we can create a nice clean corner to then start cutting more plasterboard pieces to replace. Oh, and obviously do the same on the other side. Ah. I think you get the gist of this. I'll carry on this while you can skip to the good parts. So we've cut our piece. I've shaved it down several times to make sure it fits it and look we've managed to get our plasterboard lift in here purely by a miracle because we've got a bathroom door for the leg to slot through but remember I had to do a load of removing old plasterboard coving unfortunately that also meant while we were taking the coving down grit got at the back of this peeling wallpaper it was coming off anyway but we were trying to keep it as tidy and nice as possible for well for as long as possible but that didn't work out so i'm going to put loads of screws in and then we're going to start working around the back of the area I'll tell you what though i'm quite impressed with these walls there's no layers of wallpaper paint to remove i think it's going to be very easy to decorate once we take all of this off don't forget as well i've marked where all my joists are running i will have to create a continuous line with a batten 
just so I don't miss any. And I'll be putting six screws in each. But I'm going to start over here where it meets in the middle of one of the joists because I need another platterboard panel to meet there. I promise I do plan to take your advice of getting one of those drywall bits. I just haven't been out yet. They look cool. So yesterday I finished plasterboarding the main bit that's always been exposed ever since we bought this place. And I've now got to do this bit, but before I do that, I've gone out and bought some joist hangers just to go around the, the four joists that we've cut to screw them to the joists and to the framework that we've made. So I'm gonna do that now. I've already done one, so I know I can get access from here without having to go upstairs. And that's purely because I decided to rip off the remaining plasterboard so it would be easier to plasterboard and skim later. I've just bought some insulation foil, which I'm gonna cut down and line the inside of our loft ladder hatch. I wanna try and make it as warm as possible. And my husband has also just taped up the joists where there's joins. He took your advice with insulation foil. So hopefully we're gonna to be toasty warm, especially when we put that insulation up there. So thanks so much for all your advice and we definitely know what to do next time we have to do it again. Oh, it looks like it's going to hold itself. So I've slotted that between the lock door and the ladder. Then I've added a few strips around it. And I'm just going to add some more around the sides. Now this might be OTT because this technically is an insulated loft ladder, but I just think you may as well. Now that's done, let's crack on with the last bits of plasterboard. Right, I've got my last panel that I've cut. I'm gonna give it a go. Like a glove. So now I've got a fully functioning loft ladder. How much easier is that? So I never really like going up in the attic, but this has made things so much more convenient because I've got a few upcoming projects like rolling out some insulation and sorting some electrics. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe for projects up here. Catch you in my next one.